Reaching the finish line of what could be the figure arts No Way Home comparisons, we have the final suit, but I feel like it's here where figure arts is getting a little complacent. I know that over the past few months I've become a little bit of the Legends versus figure arts, McFarlane versus figure arts comparison guy, but we do have just one final entry, allegedly, for the time being. Because I feel like with everything that they've covered thus far, I have a very tough time believing that Fioris is going to go back to the No Way Home well. I know that technically they didn't come up with a Doc Ock or Electro or even a Lizard, but I feel like they're potentially ready to move on. But before they do, they're giving us their iteration of the final suit, which is this brand new straightforward red and blue suit that Peter dons at the very end of No Way Home, taking inspiration from both Andrew and Toby's suits after his interaction with those other Peters. And this is allegedly, supposedly, the suit that he's going to be wearing should there be a fourth film, which is still a little up in the air since it sounds like behind the scenes Marvel is actually axing an awful lot of projects because... They may have bitten more than they could chew. So for now, in terms of something coming out of figure arts in regards to the suit, this is going to be your version. And you can see right here that they pretty much lifted that suit as best as they could considering how it's practically got, what, less than a minute of screen time. And that was often the thing that everybody was saying, oh my god, this is a suit, this, this is the definitive Spidey suit. And I'm over here going like, yeah, but we really don't see it properly in action. Yes, he's doing his climactic, his very iconic final swing, but I feel like there has to be a little bit more in the can to be able for me to give it a proper ranking as far as where I put this, where I place this suit amongst the list of the at least the Tom Holland suits, even if we were to take Andrew and Toby out of the equation. With that said, I do appreciate that they're trying to kind of convey this message that he's trying to stray away from following another mentor figure and not let it be super stark infused or even strange infused but rather just make it his own thing this is legitimately his own made suit now with that said i need to get my qualms with the suit out of the way as far as design as far as whatever figure arts needed to do to make this figure happen and that is the reflective sheen on the blue not a fan of it. I think it's a little bit Power Ranger-y. I don't like it personally. I, when it appeared on screen, I was like, uh, kind of hoping that this is going to be one of those rare occasions where I hope that they change it in between movies. I know that costume changes always happen in between movies for some really unexplained reason. Personally, I don't like the reflective sheen of the blue. I don't, and that's a design thing. I just don't personally like it. But I do appreciate the red hue, the spider symbol, the design of it, the overall look of the one on the back, as well as just the very straightforward and clean look of having a very iconic, but also classic looking Spidey suit. With that said, Figure Arts pretty much took it, shrunk it down into their specific scale, which I want to say it's just a little over the cusp of five inches. And overall, I feel like this thing is legitimately the business. Not only do you have the proper texturing happening with the red, as well as the spider symbol there on the chest, the webbing, the lining that's actually indented into the plastic. But hell, as much as I don't like it, that reflective quality to the blue plastic actually looks on point and very premium. Even though, like I said, subjective-wise, I don't like how reflective it is. It is quite, it doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels legitimately like something that Figure Arts would put very much attentive to its detail as far as how it comes across not only in camera here, but even in person. And that's the thing about this suit is that there's not really meant to be any distinctive patterns or any little details here and there kind of reminiscent of the integrated suit as far as the complexities of the suit. It's supposed to be a very straightforward classic suit. And for the most part, I feel like they were able to hone in on that. But one thing that I had my reservations for, despite getting already some promo shots, was the proportions. Because if you guys remember, wasn't the biggest fan of the proportions for the integrated suit No Way Home figure arts figure over here from the ending of Spider-Man No Way Home, where he's got... The mainly black and red suit, but with a little bit of those gold touches of the integrated parts of the nanotech here on the chest. And even though I personally, subjectively, like the design of this suit better than this one, holy shit, you can definitely see how much of an overhaul they gave him as far as proportions. This actually feels pretty nuanced, pretty well 
proportioned and balanced as opposed to how wide and girthy and really weird looking the shoulders and the arms really are versus that of the torso. The lower body is pretty much on point, at least with this one. Here, however, it's pretty much a straight shot for, I want to say, about 97 to 98 percent of the overall body where does that lingering three to four percent lie unfortunately it's going to be that neck you can see right there that the neck is just a little too elongated for my personal taste that's probably the only area that the integrated suit was actually able to nail they actually have a much more proportionate neck that feels more in line with the shoulders and it doesn't look so bobbleheadedly whereas the final suit unfortunately has too much of a floaty head thing going on right there and there is technically an explanation for that. We'll get to that momentarily when we cover not only articulation, but even the accessories. But it's just the only thing that I just really wish they could have almost filed down. There's even a part of me that feels like maybe some modder out there could kind of take a file and, or a Dremel and just kind of file it down. But... Once I started to finagle with not just, again, the articulation, but also an extra accessory he comes with, I feel like that can compromise that extra functionality. So that is a bummer to see. But overall, you can see right here that the actual slimming design is definitely not something to worry about. And that was one of the things that I was, in fact, worried about. So the only thing really left to do is to see exactly how he fares versus another company's take on the final suit. Probably the only other figure of the final suit that we really have out there in the market which is going to be unfortunately <laughs> marvel legends you guys know exactly how i feel about this specific marvel legends which was recently released uh, at least as recent as late last year early this year depending on what retailer marketplace you exactly kind of pulled him from and you can see the distinctive difference now that's not to say necessarily to be completely objective here that this is the worst figure imaginable there's just so many shortcomings that i just thought to myself okay i guess this is just gonna have to do for now because proportioning wise this is not too bad you know you got the basic functionality and we also have to keep the price point in mind this is a 25 dollar figure and for what you're getting oh, for the most part it's decent it's just that as i mentioned in that initial review where i covered all three Peters from that brand new released individual wave with the separate hands but also with the separate unmasked heads that they decided to withhold the first time around you'll see here that not only do you have a much smaller spider symbol that is kind of resembling that of the one that we got in the movie as well as the figure arts here but the color scheming is completely off in fact I dare say that again despite my personal reservations with the reflectiveness this one is technically 100% accurate as far as the red and the blue hue that they utilize. Now seeing it next to each other, this guy is meant... It's almost more like a comic book representation, which I guess, depending on the person, might not be the worst thing imaginable. In fact, there's probably going to be some people out there that prefer this color scheming as far as a subjective take. But if you're looking for exact screen accuracy... Oh no, this guy is the clear winner. Not only that, but despite the elongated head, you'll see right there that, uh, yeah, one of my biggest complaints about the Marvel Legends was that bulbous head, which was able to kind of hide in plain sight because by default, out of the package, he comes with the Tom Holland head, which I, again, go on record to say he looks a little too babyface as far as that likeness. Once you swap it for the mass head here so that we have a much more even comparison, you'll see just how bulbous and really egg-headed this forehead area really seems, despite how badly they try to kind of cover it up by the darkness of the webbing, the texturing underneath the, plas the red plastic there, no, 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 no. This guy is much more accurate. It's much more of a natural oval. In fact, if you look at the mask itself, let me set this to the side. God damn it. <laughs> You'll see right here that, yeah, they even went ahead and sculpted the ears here on the side to kind of make it look like the ears are being pressed down. I don't know. It's just a nice little detail to kind of give it just a mild sense of realism. And something that just feels a little premium quality as far as what they were able to focus on in regards to the figure. And so overall, I would say that, yeah, this guy's so far checking every box. I just wish that there was one thing that they could have nailed. Actually, two things. One of them was, of course, what I already mentioned, which was the neck. The other is sadly something that now looking very cl closely, the Marvel Legends was actually able to nail which is a shame considering the companies, the price points, the tiers, and that's going to be those elbows. You'll notice that the elbows are accurately painted on the Marvel Legends, where you have blue on the inside with the little red webbing 
kind of overlapping towards the bicep and forearm area. Whereas sadly, the figure arts neglected to even do that. It's all just one giant red piece for the joint so that when you turn it around, you'll notice that it's pretty much all one red piece. So it kind of ruins a little bit of that illusion going on right there with the reflective blue. And considering that the blue is reflective, it just kind of calls attention to it a little bit more. And th here's the thing. An awful lot of people were complaining about things related to that with some of the smaller tier companies like Marvel Legends or dare I even say McFarlane when some of their Batman figures came with these black joints for the elbows but then the entirety of the suit around the arm area is gray so it kind of stood out and sadly I feel like a similar happenstance is occurring here with these elbows so that's probably one of the two things that would have otherwise made a perfect representation of the final suit, at least this, in this scale. But of course, if you're looking for something that's a bit more on the realistic side and arguably way bigger side, you're going to have to wait for that Hot Toys. But at least here, and potentially unlike the Hot Toys, since with Hot Toys, you're often dealing with a realistic suit that limits the mobility of the damn thing in the first place. That's not necessarily going to be the case with the figure arts. You know me. I often have a tendency to really like the joints that they place on some of these uh, limbs and some of these areas for their figures. And that's uh, arguably, at least from my perspective, where you spend an awful lot of that money. Of course, the head, despite the elongated neck, allows the top part of the head or at least the top part of the neck along with the whole overall head sculpt to be able to rotate 360 as well as slightly tilt up and down and side to side but then you can go a little extra few degrees further with the baseline of the neck that's able to tilt it from side to side and forward and back so you get a little bit more flexibility happening right there of course you're going to have that traditional figure arts joint happening around the shoulder area where not only do you have the kind of dumbbell design happening with the inside part of the shoulder that allows it to rotate 360 degrees as well as slightly extend upwards and downwards but also kind of shift it in place and then of course the overall very thick disc on the inside part of the shoulder that allows the butterfly joint movement forwards and backwards as well as also shrugging motion and rotation all the way around as you see before you right there so very pleasant right there and full extension and so far Despite the shrugging motion that is actually pretty fluid and pretty extendable, you still get additional pieces of the reflective blue patterning right there, so we don't have the same problem with the elbow happening there. But on top of that, so far, this is not wood, but I'm knocking on it anyway, so far no joints have frozen in on me like figure arts often tends to do with their plastics. So, so far I haven't necessarily had to call on either a hair dryer or WD-40. <laughs> right below the shoulder though, you do have your bicep swivels that are able to rotate all the way around. And despite my complaint about the actual pain apps behind those elbow joints, you still can bend them all the way upwards at the two points. So you can fully bend the elbow all the way up. And then of course you're gonna have those traditional wrist joints that are able to allow the hand to rotate 360 on the actual peg itself, as well as bend inwards and outwards. No problems there. The torso is where it does feel just a little finicky because you technically do have the mid torso cut but it is a little on the stiff side i noticed that when you kind of incline it so that you're able to kind of flush this kind of bend towards that direction because of the way that the overall torso is sculpted you get a little bit more slack but of course do be careful because then the plastic starts to kind of conflict with one another and I'm also kind of scared that this ends up being the joint that stiffs up on me. But so far, no problems there turning left to right. In fact, I almost... And I did it! Okay. <laughs> it was able to rotate 360. And so far, no problems. As well as slight crunching inwards and upwards as you see before you right there. It even kind of feels like it can kind of shift in place side to side. Then you have a little bit more flexibility and oblique crunching. But more so forwards and backwards on the waist. No real turning though, but... We just established that we can fully rotate 360 on the mid torso, so no problems there. Then you get to, again, my favorite joints when it comes to figure arts, those top leg joints where you have this extra piece to not only allow more mobility, but also allow it to be mass. And even though there's an awful lot of paneling that calls more attention to itself because, again, the reflective sheen to it, at least it allows that premium quality of being able to move the joints not only forwards about that far, but also fluid all the way back, like so, almost a full-on T-post with the legs, but it's still masked by this piece. And then, of course, you're going to have that traditional figure art cylinder on the inside that allows extension, like about right there. Right underneath that, you're going to have your thigh swivels. However, I noticed that they kind of stop 
right about right there. They can't fully rotate, but I feel like that's becoming more of a trend with figure arts because I'm noticing that they sculpt this top thigh piece diagonally. So obviously you're gonna have the top part that's a little raised higher to kind of conflict a little bit with that plastic on the backside. So you are able to turn it pretty much a full 90 degree angle to allow it to kind of swivel out that way, but that's really about it. And it's just a little bit of a disappointment considering that we've seen some figure arts being able to go much more further before in the past. But at least the quality of the joint feels premium and that goes double for the knees. You guys know these are some of my favorite uh, joints and they are fully able to bend all the way upwards like so. They feel very fluid but not too stiff. And I do remember some people note noting that certain figure arts, not all, but some of them do have these knee pieces. These kneecaps kind of pop off when you do bend. So far, nothing has happened with this guy, but I will add a little bit of an anecdote here that I have had some other figure arts. I want to say there was one other one, but right now at the top of my head, the one that instantly comes to mind was in fact Across the Spider-Verse Miguel O'Hara. He did have a couple of those knee pads pop off once or twice, and thankfully they pop back into place. They even have a little snappy noise, so it's just a matter of how much of finagling you're really doing with the knees thus far and so far I'm trying to be careful with them but I haven't had any problems with the final suit version here then you get down to the ankles where I did have a little bit of stiffiness happening because even though the foot is fully able to bend downwards and upwards very fluidly turning is actually kind of a problem on this I don't know if it's because of how stiff the joint is or if it's because of the way that the cuff on the ankle part of the leg is sculpted that it kind of interrupts itself. So you're, I'm able to pivot very well inwards and outwards. But as far as full on 360 horizontal rotation, I don't feel like I can do it. It kind of nudge left and right, but it doesn't fully rotate. And I feel, again, that I've had figure arts in the past being able to do that fully. And uh, I don't know. I feel like it's being uh, holding itself a little back. So I'm a little bummed out by that. But at least the toes can still fully bend all the way up and they don't feel as restricted as some other recent figure arts that I've been covering where it's just a little nub that you just press up. Here you actually get full on toe articulation that can bend almost a full 90 degrees upwards. So you do have a little bit of extra stability there. So a couple of little caveats towards the leg area, but overall that traditional figure arts articulation that you've come to know them by is still represented here. And that along with the proportioning, the attention to the suit, despite again, my subjective takes is pretty much making this a damn near perfect representation of not just Tom Holland's Spidey, but also that final suit, should you be kind of vying for a version of this suit that not only looks a bit more accurate, that's better than the Marvel Legends, but it's also delivering that shelf presence. Whether it's delivering the value, that's where I come into probably my biggest problem with this figure. You see, I've been kind of holding back on what exactly this guy goes for, especially when I was comparing him to the Marvel Legends, which I very distinctively noted is a $25 figure, and I was trying to use that as a justification as to why it is that maybe the quality is not 100% there, the articulation is not the greatest, but I still nitpicked the color scheming. They could have done a little bit better on that. All you have to do is just change up hues. It doesn't have to be as reflective as this guy. And so far, I definitely feel the premium quality behind the joints, the articulation, and then of course the accuracy to the suit and the proportions that to me definitely makes this almost the definitive version of this suit. But for $85, and then you add on whatever shipping you're probably going to have to pay, depending on where you're getting him through Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, or you're importing it overseas from Japan. I know that sometimes they get a little bit on the cheaper side because you're waiting a little extra time, but still, you're packing on whatever taxes, whatever shipping costs, and say, for example, you are getting it domestically from Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store. Maybe even Amazon, I believe, he, even they you know, are able to ship it out. You're still looking at some somewhere in the ballpark of 85 to 90 maybe even $95. And so you get this guy. He's about five and a half inches. And what I've kind of covered before with figure arts is that, yeah, you get this premium quality with the figure. But other, other people's arguments are going to be that for $25, you still get a half-decent figure for the final suit through that Marvel Legends. So you, generally, I fall back on the accessories to kind of make up for that cost. But I got to be brutally honest, 
I'm not really feeling it with the accessories that they decided to throw with this guy. I feel like figure arts really cheaped out on what they tossed in, especially knowing that they've done way better before. Because you get the traditional extra hands. Of course, by default, he comes with the fisted hands. You're going to come with web shooting hands, slightly extending open hands. And then, of course, what seem to be like wall crawling hands are kind of indented. Like the fingers are kind of slightly bent. So it, they kind of look like they're wall crawling or they're kind of grabbing onto something. Except there's nothing really here to grab. And speaking of grabbing, you technically do have the web strand holding hands with the little thumbs kind of indicated up along with a hole cut out in the middle to then hold one of his web strands which is going to of course be this long one that you've seen many a times before and naturally he's going to come with some web accessories except dude we only get one of each <laughs> you get the one long one which okay you know it's the long one they traditionally only throw in about one but when you get to the other shooting ones you only get one of each just one one long one one short one Come on, we've seen them do it before where they throw in two of these guys. And sure, it's accessories. That's probably their argument. You you probably already have the integrated suit. You probably already have some other previously released figure arts of the Tom Holland Spidey, whether it be from Far From Home, Homecoming, etc. But I'm sorry, but as a company, you really shouldn't be presumptuous that way. And on top of that, I can't imagine how much these guys can cost them a little extra just to toss in, like I said, one or two extras. So I don't understand what is happening here. Furthermore, you get this accessory, which is naturally the accessory you've seen many times before. And it's traditionally utilized to remove the eye so that you're able to swap it out for the extra lenses accessories. So you're able to change up the emotions on his face because naturally Tom Holland's mask was able to emote with the different lenses opening and closing. And that was often the case with prior figure arts for this interpretation. However, that's not the case here. This guy is mainly thrown in so that you can remove the panel here on his back so that you're able to push in this added piece for a display stand. Yeah, well, here's the thing. You guys didn't even throw in a display stand. There's no display stand in the box. You know, none of those little cheap finagly ones just to hold them up. They throw in this. They throw in the tool to remove the panel, but there's no display stand. Again, it's them being presumptuous saying, oh, you guys already have plenty of figure arts. You, you probably got some base laying around. And technically, I have my own self, you know, provided bases from the good folks over at Elevated Figure Displays. I'll throw in the link in the description if you guys want to check that out. But they at least do a serviceable job of trying to fit that peg in and hold the figure in place. But that's something that I have to provide for myself on my own here. And going back to those lenses, that was a very fun feature to be able to swap out the different lenses, make it look like he's wincing, winking, surprised. You don't really have that luxury here because, as you can see, he comes with an extra head sculpt with much more narrow focused lenses already embedded into the head sculpt. And this also is the explanation as to why the neck is much more elongated. And that's because swapping the heads is actually not too bad. It's, it's actually pretty easy. You just give it a slight little tug and it comes off easily. And you can see right there exactly why it is that funneling or dr dribbling down this neck piece to make it a little shorter might compromise this piece right here. It might damage it and therefore completely surrender the functionality of being able to swap out the two head pieces. And when you do that, all you have to do is just put it back firmly on this little uh, pedestal here, fit it right into place. And you can see he's got a much more fierce look on his face, which don't get me wrong, looks pretty badass, especially when he's in a action pose such as this. So overall, the sculpt and the detail behind this secondary alternate head is still not bad. And I actually kind of prefer the fiercer looking lenses. But why do we need an extra head sculpt for those lenses? Furthermore, I have my theory that originally, I don't know what happened in the process. And again, it's another one of my theories. Oh my God. Oh, oh shit. shit. Here, Here we, we go, go again, again with one of my theories. My theory is that somewhere in the production of this guy, they were going to do those extra lenses. But they just, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a cost thing, but they just scrapped the idea. Because if you look in either of his heads, 
and you take a very quick peek inside, you'll notice that those lens pieces are actually attached with the peg that you traditionally see. And that's generally the little peg that you press with this tool to get the lenses out. But this time, it doesn't work. Nothing happens. They're glued in. I tried pressing it with my finger, with the tool, nothing. And that's because they're glued in. But you can still see the peg. So it's not like it was all one sculpted printed piece. You actually have the lenses in there with that peg. But this time they're glued in, fastened in. And I know what you're saying. They probably just took the existing blueprint from some prior Tom Holland figure arts and poured it over here. Okay, if they can do that, why can't they do it with that whole lens feature? They've done it before. Just poured it over. Why not? But no. They decided to cut costs, cut out those lenses, glue this in, and boom. You just have the extra head so that you have those predetermined lenses, so to speak. It's almost like a game that has a character creator, but then you can only choose from preset faces. So I'm like, all right, it's not really a character creator to begin with then, right? It, it, I, I've always been bugged by that when it comes to certain RPGs. And I feel like there's a similar practice happening here with figure arts. So... That is pretty much what $85 before tax kind of gets you. Everything right here. And it's a little underwhelming. Especially when you consider that the integrated suit version that I covered most recently when I was comparing the figure arts to pretty much all of the recently released Marvel Legends Peter figures, Tom, Andrew, and Toby, and how much crap he came for, I want to say, about the same price. If anything, maybe he was only like $5 more. But dude, you get the extra hands, you get the web strands, of which you get two of the short and two of the long bulbous ones, so you can actually add webs to both of this his shooting hands. But then you get two extra Tom Holland unmasked head sculpts, a battle damaged one and a non-battle damaged one, along with an extra neck piece that is unmasked so you can show a little bit of the added skin tone for accuracy, and an extra mask piece to holding his hand and the extra lenses to be able to swap them out from the inside of the mask head. So then that tool would actually have some purpose behind it. And the Doctor Strange box. You get all this for, I want to say, only about $5 more depending on also where you, you know, purchase your figures. There's probably going to be some retailers out there that charge an extra $5. So probably about $10. But to me, honestly, yes, I had my problems with the proportions of this guy. But for the value, there's definitely something funky happening here. And I absolutely hate to say it, but it almost kind of gives a little bit of credence to the folks who say that if they're on a budget, the $25 No Way Home Marvel Legends will probably suffice. Because yeah, for $84.99 and probably some additional shipping costs and taxes, there's definitely a huge discrepancy here that I didn't feel 100% comfortable with. Knowing that the integrated final battle version comes with the extra heads, the Doctor Strange box, the accessories, the extra hands, the web strands. Sure, it's things that we've seen time again, but that kind of just adds more to the argument as to why it is that they couldn't just toss it in again. It's one of the things that I was mentioning when I was covering this guy in that initial hour-long comparison. Was saying, yo, if we can get the proportions of this guy and, of course, the final suit portrayal of this red and blue, despite how I feel about the reflectiveness, but we get this entire book, but with the accessories and value of this guy, match made in goddamn heaven. And sadly, we still did not get that somehow. And I don't know how it is that it could have been fumbled this bad. And sure, there is an extent of blessing counting, if that <laughs> if that's even a term, because we have to remember, this is what we had to deal with back in the day. This is the, let me see if I could look at it a little bit closer here. This is the figure arts of the homecoming Spider-Man Tom Holland. And you can see right here that, yeah, even though this guy had quite an awful lot of accessories and articulation and whatnot, that body is damn near kind of atrocious, if I've got to be really, really frank. So we've come a long way. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of the proportioning happening with the integrated suit, at least the progression that we had since then, along with the accessories, makes that, in my opinion, the definitive Tom Holland figure arts if you're in the market for one. This final suit version, I would say it's probably perfect for completionists and for people who fell head over heels with that suit when it showed up at the very, very end of No Way Home. 
outside of that, I feel like you can, especially for the 90 bucks, practically skip on it unless you come buy it through a sale or through some kind of bargain. I don't know. But I feel like Figure Arts right now had that in mind themselves considering that they barely even tried with the accessories because it's almost like they already went and ahead and assumed that you already had this guy. So what exactly bother with that since you could just port over some of the accessories on over to that. And it's that presumption that's going to make me give the Figure Arts No Way Home final suit version a 7 out of 10. And that's the overall package. The figure itself is damn near a 9 out of 10, if I've got to be quite honest. Like I said, my only real problems is just how inconsistent they were with those elbow joints as well as the elongated neck. But if it weren't for those two things, he would be a 10 out of 10 figure. It's really the value proposition and the accessories that really lets it down. It makes it very difficult to not really look at the Marvel Legends here and go, yeah, you know, if you're on a budget, if you really want to cut back and just want a very traditional six inch figure in your collection that pairs really well with a Toby, with an Andrew, then for 25 bucks, and if you can actually find it, because I know it's a really difficult to come by, especially in physical stores, then yeah, by all means, go for it. Just know that you're missing out on quite a bit of hand accessories that I will admit are a little easier to swap on the Marvel Legends than on the figure arts because of those really stubby, very thin, nubby pegs that I really dislike. I really wish that we can kind of move away from that with figure arts and kind of move closer to what Mafex does with those extra hand accessories where you can just kind of slide it off the peg instead of pop it off because then popping it back on. It's so thin that I feel like I'm going to break it at any second. But that's just an overall figure arts problem, not just beholden to this figure. And that widespread problem with the wrist joints along with also the cutback on accessories makes me feel like I'm probably going to go on a little bit of a vacation from figure arts unless they can really announce some sort of banger figure that I'm looking at and going, God damn it! Spider-Punk. I did say that the Across the Spider-Verse guys are actually doing pretty good. I don't know why. I don't know why, but their streak has continued with Miles, Gwen, Miguel, and now we got Hobie. I guess I'll see you guys on that video whenever that thing ships. But in the meantime, what do you guys think of this final suit? Is this a pickup? Or do you think that this is still one of those little extra things that you'll probably get later down the line when it goes on sale? Is this necessary for your collection or can you really hold out on it? Let me know down below. And then, of course, as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you did not, hit the thumbs down. And in the meantime, take care and stay humble. I'll see you guys later.